First of all, I'd like to thank Dushanka, especially, and your helpers, but you especially for um, your role in getting me here. And through you, the Australian Embassy, <laughs> I can't imagine that you, <laughs> you did all the things that you did to get me here. So thank you very much and congratulations on this wonderful conference. Your heart beats fast, you start to sweat, you have this fear that you'll forget you start to pant, your headache pounds, and then you jump at every sound. Your stomach is queasy and your skin gets a rash. You might as well face it, you're allergic to math. I'll tell the cure without delay. First come to class, don't miss a day. Go to the lab and questions asked, take good class notes, then learn the fact. You must believe in this logical path, and you might just find that you're addicted to math. In 1986, there was uh, the International Congress of Mathematicians was held in Berkeley in California, and the American, our sister American organization, uh, was organizing a panel discussion about issues of women and they invited several women from Europe to speak at this. And I was, for some reason, invited also to go to a committee meeting of the American Association for Women in Mathematics. And I was so impressed. We were in a room with a big table and maybe 15, 20 women all very seriously discussing, but at the same time friendly. It was such an atmosphere. And then we spoke at this uh, panel discussion and I said, most of us were actually members of the Association for Women in Mathematics. And I said, we should have such an organization in Europe. I and so there were a group of five of us and we agreed, yeah, let's try to do this. And uh, it was kind of a miracle, but the idea worked. So gradually we, we set up a formal legal structure and we made a proper organization and we've continued to grow and develop. We have meetings every two years and this is the 14th such meeting. So that's not quite 28 years, but getting close. At the time, uh, there were not that many women mathematicians, especially not in my country, which is Norway, which is a country which is otherwise known for having a high uh, participation of women, especially in politics. But uh, sadly to say, in mathematics and also like in physics, the situation is quite different. And there is still very few women in mathematics and physics in Norway. And this means that there, we still have a long way to go. EWM, the European Women in Mathematics, is an organization that, that uh, brings together women in mathematics in Europe, as its name says. But uh, it's important because women are so underrepresented in mathematics. There, we are way too few. And uh, many women who work in mathematics, therefore, have the impression of being very isolated. Sometimes it's just very nice to meet other people who are more like ourselves. There's some different kind of interactions that happen between women. And so our idea was to form a network of women and contacts and friendships all across Europe. And I, I think this, this vision that we had really has kind of succeeded. It's not very big, but we have a fantastic network of people who we would never have met if we hadn't had this organization. So I think EWM is an important organization. Um, the main thing to me in the beginning especially was to have the network, to meet other women mathematicians. I think it's, it's important if, uh, if, if you want to uh, bring women in higher numbers to conferences that you make it possible for them. And uh, so I have organized workshops where I wanted to invite uh, somebody, a, a young woman who had done fantastic work, but she also had just had a baby. I mean, 
and she was nursing her baby. There's no way she could have come if I hadn't taken that into account. So I, before I invited her, I actually told the conference that I wanted to have a lecture room with a small room right next to it, and I wanted them to find somebody who could mind the baby. It didn't have to be a big professional, but just somebody who was responsible enough and old enough that the mother would, could come with her baby and be in the lecture room and could be called out of the lecture room whenever the baby needed her. And, uh, and they agreed. And then I invited this one woman and I told her I had arranged this. And this was what made the difference. She was very happy to come to the conference. I mean, uh, and, and so she could talk about her work and have her baby also. But I think every little thing that anybody can do who understands mathematics in order to, to, to bring it to more people will help. I don't have a big recipe to change it in a whole country or a whole world. I mean, I think that we should all help with small circles. And if more of us do things, I think professional mathematicians have for too long a time not done anything about it. This could Psychologists know a lot, about, a lot about this. Some people really do have troubles learning, thinking this way, but there's a lot of this thing that if, if you're told you can't do it, then probably you cannot. I mean, you should sort of muster some kind of confidence. I will do this, I can do this. And this is a problem, especially for girls, if we keep telling them they can't do it, or if, if sort of the, their surroundings, their parents, their brothers and sisters tell them, well, math, or they, they may not say it out loud, they just, I mean, they just don't care whether this girl learns math or not, that is a big problem, then, then they don't learn it. Mathematics, it's, it's a funny thing. Uh, mathematics is one of the subjects we see a lot of during our schooling. I mean, elementary school, high school. And I think of the, of the subjects that we see a lot of, it's the only one that people get really turned off by. I mean, you see a lot of, of language instruction. People don't say, oh my God, talking or writing. I was so terrible at that. As a mathematician, you constantly, uh, I mean, you meet educated people at a party and they say, oh my God, mathematics, and they roll their eyes. If you meet someone on the train and they ask you what you're doing in life and then you say, I'm doing maths, and then you start trying to explain that it's not just filling in your tax forms <laughs> or, or doing sums all the time. People perceive mathematics as a much more mysterious and difficult thing than it is. Uh, you don't need any special talent or any special gene. You don't need to be from another planet in order to be good at mathematics. And actually, everybody does mathematics all the time. And I think the fear for mathematics is it comes from the fact that to do mathematics and to do it well, you need to be confident. I mean, you need sometimes you need to take a leap. You need to try to do something that looks not doable. I mean, and you just need to. So, so it's, it's sort of going out in the deep end. I mean, you jump into this and you don't know whether you can really swim. And if you're not confident about yourself, you just stay on the bank. You just don't go into it. And. Um, so this is one side of it. And the other side is that since a lot of people already have this math and anxiety, it's sort of okay to have it. So you have parents telling their, especially their daughters, oh, well, I can understand you don't understand this. I never understood this at school either. And, uh, but they wouldn't do that if, if their kids couldn't learn to read. I mean, if, or, I mean, it's not okay to say, well, Shakespeare, I don't know about Shakespeare. I don't care about Shakespeare. But it's, it's okay to say this about mathematics because this is sort of a general consensus. Women who are more senior know uh, that it, it's, it's something that, that, uh, uh, that the junior women haven't often experienced and that it may help them uh, feel uh, that it's not only an uphill battle, that uh, yes it can be done, yes it is fun, yes there are more of me. Well I think EWM has helped me enormously because during the whole of my so-called career I have been kind of doubting whether I'll be good enough for doing serious career in mathematics but then meeting all these other women and seeing how well established they are and so on I can finally be convinced that okay maybe I can also do this so I really appreciate these kind of conferences and EWM has given me a lot. And 
it's difficult to get jobs in the universities in, in Norway and also in many other countries. But there's so many things you can do with a PhD in mathematics that I think uh, if you like mathematics, you should be encouraged to do it. It has been a very, very special meeting for us all here in Novisad. It's good to, 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 to meet other women and to, it's an, an incredible experience to be at a conference where the mathematical level is very high where uh, we, we, we all are interested in mathematics, we're all smart women, and, but we're all women. I mean, it's a very, uh, it's, it's an unusual experience and it's fun. I think the future for mathematics is, uh, is bright in the sense that uh, I think people realize more and more that mathematics is everywhere. And uh, this is, is, has also to do with the popularization of mathematics, which points out that uh, really things that you don't believe uh, have to do with mathematics. In fact, there is mathematics behind. I think it's very interesting to see the development uh, uh, mathematical methods uh, applied to biology. It used to be mathematics and physics. And of course now mathematics and biology is sort of the hot topic. And I think we will see great things uh, both for biology and mathematics in the, in the future. We have this problem with mathematics that there's mathematics in the GPS, there's mathematics when you go on the internet, there's mathematics everywhere in your everyday life. But we do a lot to hide it. I mean, there's mathematics in these cameras and, and everything. But if this mathematics was exposed to people, they would be afraid to use a GPS to go to do use internet banking and so on. So we put it away which makes people forget that there is, so, so people don't know about all this mathematics. So it's sort of a balance. So we put it away because we're afraid they, uh, we don't want to, to, to scare them off. But then we have this problem, they say, why should we support mathematics? Why should there be research in mathematics? And yes, so, so, so maybe, I mean, so there should be a big a label on these things saying there's mathematics inside. I mean, like the ones Intel inside, you know, we have, we have a label math inside. Insight, but hidden. So, uh, so we should go out and tell people about this. And learn the fact. You must believe in this logical path, and you might just find that you're addicted to math.